here at Florida Shell and Dirt Company. My name is Roger Portell. I'm the director of invertebrate paleontology and micropaleontology collections at the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville, Florida. And this is Carmi Thompson. Carmi is a graduate student. But what we're trying to do at this pit is capture a stratigraphic section. So we're about to start sampling for our field work today. Here you can see members okay, so, of our field uh, crew. Toby Grun and I will start taking samples. This current section is over 300 centimeters. Take a little bit of time, especially if the material is hard or more rock-like. But generally, these shelly units are relatively unconsolidated or loose. The section was cleaned yesterday, so you can hopefully tell in this video that where they're collecting from is relatively homogeneous in coloration compared to the surrounding area. And you can see they're documenting again these different parts of the section in more detail up close. They'll begin sampling in the area around it to get some of these first shells for our section today. This is a close-up view of some of the outcrop that we've sectioned for our sampling today. You can see these pink flags, each are indicating a 30 centimeter interval. 30 centimeters is a fairly standard sampling interval for units of this nature, ones that are unlithified, often full of paleontological material. Finer sampling intervals can be useful for micropaleontology. Micropaleontology includes the study of organisms such as foraminifera, which are single-celled protists, and ostracodes, which are a type of arthropod. The technical term that I like to use is shrimp inside a peanut shell. And while these animals are not visible, if you were to take some of these sediments home with you and view them under a microscope, you may be able to see an environment that is teeming with forms of protists, single-celled organisms, and animal life, ostracodes. So in addition to collecting our stratigraphic samples, which are carefully measured, we're also taking bulk samples of some of the matrix. This sample is going to be going to a university in Ohio so that they can look at the shells and look for epibionts on the shells. So things like bryozoans, barnacles, anything that might grow on the animals when they were alive or after they've died, but before they get buried. At this quarry, the material that they sell is primarily shell and sand, and the shells are used primarily for road base, and they also sell the sand component, and they can use some of the shell as aggregate, mix it with sand, and add cement to make concrete. But sometimes if the shell component is pure enough, the shells are ground up, and they use them for chicken feed, and it helps with the production of eggs. Hi, this is Diane Scrimenti. I'm part of the Sanibel Captiver Shell Club, and I had the wonderful opportunity today to volunteer with Florida Museum and collect some shells. So we spent the day measuring out and collecting specimens and placing them in bags to be sorted later. I found a giant whelk. I originally came to help, but also found the opportunity to bring home a bucket full of uh, fossilized shells and I hope that everybody has as much fun as I did. So something cool about the vase shell, this is an index fossil for one of the units that we're looking at today. So an index fossil is a particular kind of fossil that can tell us about what time we're in. So this species of vase tells you that you're in the Burmont Formation. And the Burmont Formation is a Pleistocene unit that's found in different parts of Southern Florida. So that's a pretty exciting find because it tells us a little bit more about the geologic context of the site that we are visiting today. Hi, my name is Sabine Pratch, and I live on Sanibel. I hooked up with this dig through the Sanibel Shell Club, and I'm 
really grateful to the University of Florida to let me tag along and trip over some big shells. Um, I didn't find anything rare today, but I'm just super excited because this is my first time hunting fossils in Florida. Well, I've got a giant, uh, is it a lightning rock? Of course, huh? And then this one on the bottom is an extinct variety of a conch, and I'm really excited to find this because I've never seen anything like this. Well, this has just been like my happiest day ever. I know that probably sounds silly, but like I feel like I died and went to heaven, so thank you. We're now doing a little bit of a walking tour, but these are large spoil piles that remain when the construction companies running these mines are done with the material. They dump them into these big piles. All of these shells lying around the ground are excellent finds, and they can tell us a lot about these past environments in which these animals lived. However, they are not as useful as samples that are measured stratigraphically or in order. They're what paleontologists will often refer to as ex situ samples or out of place. Take a look, for example, at this mercenaria or giant clam that's ex situ. Mercenaria is a useful bivalve for paleontologists as it can be cut into thin layers and the bands of the shell, the dark and light bands, can be examined to study seasonality. The rings of shells can tell us a lot about what these past seasons might have looked like. This is another view of the Florida shell in Phil Corey, showing some of the walls that we sampled earlier today. Something that our paleontologists discussed were stratigraphic sections. Stratigraphic sections are when you measure geologic units very carefully and precisely to capture the different intervals of time found within. In the background, you can hear some of the equipment that's been used to actively mine the quarry. As this is an active dig site, we have to be careful and wear hard hats and safety vests the entire time while we are in this quarry. Some footage of our field crew at the end of the day. We're taking several of our volunteers back up to the top of the quarry since there is some active mining equipment. Let's see some of the other ways in which we prepare fossils to go into a museum collection. When we bring samples in from the field, uh, usually they're dirty and we need to, to wash them off. We have a screen washing room here at the Florida Museum of Natural History. What we do is run the sediment samples through three different screen sizes. We have a hardware cloth, a window screen, and a brass screen. And so we want to collect um, all of the specimens that we can from those sediments that we collect. And the sediments that I'm washing today are part of Carmi Thompson's master's thesis. Uh, so we're just washing them down, and then once we wash them thoroughly, with, just with regular water, um, we'll stick them in our dryers. And um, we just use bathroom fans to allow uh, the moisture to be pulled away from the samples, and the specimens dry in a few days. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, um, watching the video of us in the field, and a little bit of uh, the screen washing room. And I hope that you'll join us uh, for the collection tour video by Invertebrate Paleontology and Invertebrate Zoology. And I want to thank the Sanibel Captiva Shell Club and Carmi Thompson uh, for production of this video. Thank you.